I request the chairperson, Professor Dr. Balachandran P, to take over the session. Good evening to you all. It's a final session. I won't stay in, stand in way for me any longer. And um, I thank the organizers for asking me to chair this session. Uh, the speaker today, Varghese Paniket, needs no introduction. Alumni of uh, Medical College Trivandrum, MCI is from Chitra, and now working as a professor of Kaditara Chitri. The topic today is uh, a case of chest pain. And obviously, I don't know the what exactly is the case about. But since it's a, being presented by a surgeon, obviously it's a case the, so the surgeons could tackle it effectively. We will go on to the talk. Thank you. Thank you, Bali, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, to finish, I am there. I didn't expect this much crowd at least. <laughs> so, uh, last, last week we had a, our batch get together and um, during that, the, after the night program, everybody is enjoying the DJ and finally it has to come to end. Then my organizer came and asked me to sing a song. Then when I started that song, immediately everybody left. <laughs> so, uh, Straight away, I will go to uh, in the presentation. Chest pain. Actually, Radhika told that uh, the patient is saved, but, but, but the patient is in grave. Uh, when I was doing, uh, just after MBBS and I came for practice, whenever a chest pain comes to me, I, actually, I will be tense. I'm, I'm, I have a doubt whether I will miss an MI. So whether my diagnosis is correct, whether the pain is cardiac or non-cardiac. To assess that, uh, uh, I had no idea at the time. So what all to be ruled out, whether it is MI or myalgia or gastritis or uh, pleuritic pain, myocarditis, esophagitis, pulmonary embolism, costochondritis whether it has got specific ECG changes. If it is non-specific ECG changes, we are in doubt. We don't know what to do. Immediately refer to cardiologist. And whether it is a typical pain, if the patient has diabetes, the symptom is masked, some, we, that we know. So uh, what to do with, if it is a diabetic patient? If it is a local tenderness, uh, we used to, we, I used to be happy because I, immediately I will come with a diagnosis of costochondritis. So, dyspnea and desaturation, pulmonary embolism, and some cardiomegaly in the chest x-ray or something, we can go for some valvular heart disease or some other uh, myocarditis maybe. And ECG S1, Q3, T3, uh, that I have not, that again in pulmonary embolism, right heart strain. A 65-year-old patient, gentleman, actually a father of a doctor working in a reputed hospital in uh, Trivandrum uh, came to emergency of a, in a tertiary care at around 1 p.m. Referred by a physician outside. Chest pain since morning and the intensity has become very less now. And it came and the, uh, the duty person has seen the patient and he, he wants to rule out whether it is a cardiac pain or a non-cardiac pain. So, what normally does, this is not his ECG, some other ECG I put just to show, this think that it is a normal ECG. <laughs> the ECG was taken. Yeah. <laughs> Titus R is there, you, you will immediately see some abnormality in that. <laughs> so, uh, ECG uh, and uh, was taken in every hour. We know that some, something, some changes occur. So, for the next three hours, ECU was taken. And we have a, earlier the TROP-T test was qualitative. 
If it is positive, one line will come. If it is negative, no line. That now it is a quantitative test. It is highly sensitive. For a qualitative test, it has to be 0 0.01 nanogram per ml has to be there. The drop, the drop, troponin, troponin T component in the blood. But in a in a highly sensitive, even if the value less than that, the concentration we can assess. So even if it is 0 0.0, 0 0.005 is the first value, that is not positive. But if the next value is 0 0.007, that means after one hour it is going to, it is slowly rising. So it is significant. So even if it is not 0 0.01 to diagnose an MI, we can say that patient has got some myocardial problem. So, we, so normally for reaching 0 0.0 or 0 0.01, we have to wait for maybe three, four hours. But before that, we can recognize if it is highly sensitive quantitative drop T can be done. Quantitative drop T can be done. So it was done. And hourly trend also same, no rise. So myocardium is safe. So what is done? The, the typical symptoms are not there. Maybe chest pain is less now. And ECG is normal, cardiac specific enzymes are within normal limits. So non-cardiac cause diagnosed. So patient was advised to go home with pendoprazole. And at the exit door, when the patient reached the exit door, patient collapsed. And even, it, it, even, if, even though it was a witness arrest, patient could not be revived. OK? What can be the cause? So it can still be an MI resection. Yeah, I mean. Did you do an echo? Echo was not done. Uh, and echo was not done, and CT was not done. And unless it is in mind, it will be missed. So what was there was, it is as a dissection, actually. Dissection got ruptured at that point. So patient, patient spent three hours in observation with serial ECGs and enzymes. Chest pain with normal ECG and enzymes should have looked for a pulse deficit. Normally, if the dissection occurs, there will be a malperfusion, and the pulse in both, all the five limbs, four limbs may be different. Some limbs, it may be absent. It can occur. So it was not checked. All peripheral pulses was not examined. Echo should have been done, but it was not done. If not available, at least a CT scan. If echo is not there, cardiologist is not there. If a radiology CT scan machine is there, you can go get a CT scan done to confirm that that was not done. So high suspicion in hypertensive patients or some aortic syndromes like Marfan syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, you should suspect a dissection. So normal ECG and normal enzyme level doesn't solve the problem of chest pain. That is the presentation today. So, what uh, finally, finally the dissection. How did you diagnose? A patient was patient collapsed, and uh, on CPR, a echo was done in the ICU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not me. This is an ex experience, but in a tertiary center. <laughs> Yeah. Flap can into the RC. yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. And what could have been done, uh, if you, you take an x-ray, if you see a mediastinal widening, that can be a, a point towards the dissection. And if you take, immediately if you take a contrast CT, there can be, you can see a dissection flap. And if you do a echo, there can, you can diagnose aortic regurgitation most of the time. If coronary involvement is there, ST elevation can be there. If up to the coronary, if the flap is dissecting, it can cause an ST elevation or some coronary syndrome. So a few words about the dissection. Predisposing factors, normally 75% of, of cases of dissection have, uh, will have hypertension because of the Intimal thickening calcification and adventitial fibrosis. And some genetic syndromes like Marfan, Errol Danlos, and Bicuspid aortic valve syndrome that 
that patient also ha was, has a predisposition for uh, aortic dissection, that because of the aortic pathology. And other cause, you know, trauma and iatrogenic. Some cardiac intervention also can cause aortic dissection, because a lot of intervention catheters can pass and can cause uh, uh, dissection. And any arthritis. Pregnancy also, it is uh, iota, aortic nature will it change a little bit, so it can cause so symptoms, 96% uh, of will present with pain. So it will be excruciating pain. Normally, the chest pain will come. If it is extending into the arch, the neck pain. If it is extending into the abdominal iota, it will be back pain. And normally, there will be malperfusion. The coronary carotid will be uh, from the false lumen. And uh, maybe from the false lumen or true lumen, some carotid part partially may be occluded. So can present with stroke or paraplegia. If spinal cord perfusion is lost, can present with paraplegia. It can present like acute MI if the coronary involvement is there. And abdominal pain can present with abdominal pain if some abdominal vessels are malperfused. So dissection, some intimal tear can be the cause or some vasovasorum in the intima can rupture and cause, or a plaque rupture, penetrating ulcer can rupture. And regarding the types, if the ascending iota is involved, it is type A, and only the descending iota is involved is type P, according to Stanford. DeBakey classification, ascending iota and ascending iota, the whole iota is type 1, Ascending aorta alone type 2 and uh, descending aorta is type 3. And another interesting case, this patient didn't go to the grave. Okay, uh, actually two patients came with, uh, two 15-year-old patient, 15-year-old patient came with chest pain. The first patient uh, presented to a local hospital and patient, 15-year-old, no chance of any heart disease. They didn't do an ECG at all. They didn't do it. They just gave some pandoprazole. Patient went to gym and came back. And they uh, uh, gave some pandoprazole and sent home. The patient's mother is a staff nurse. And patient was not doing well, so he was brought to Chitra. And on reaching the hospital, patient expired. And uh, it was, a, on postmortem, it was a Andrew Wall MI. Okay, so the second patient came, and that was also a 15-year-old patient was Marfan. Patient was Mar. So immediately the chest pain patient, the, the doubt was there, the aortic dissection. Immediately the patient was uh, referred to us, and this is uh, when it is opened. Exactly, patient had on table it ruptured, but we could revive the patient, and. Uh, this is that patient uh, CT reconstruction. You can see the uh, graft with the valve there and another graft there. The ascending iota has got some dissection and flap, but that will be on follow up, we'll review. And overall, 10 year survival of any dissection is in the several studies is 30 to 60 percent. So, patient has got some life even if it is a dissection. But time, as Pramila was telling in the last talk, time is the factor. You should not waste any time. This suspect, if, if, if any patient comes with uh, chest pain to you, you should have the doubt. If ECG is normal, if ex, uh, enzymes are normal, you should not send off. You should always put the DD of dissection and uh, do an echo or a CT to rule out that, then only. This is again the same slide I put as a take home message. And thank you very much. This is based on a real incident. When I, when I discussed with the Dr. Pradeep Kadangur sir, he asked me to present, why don't you present? That is why I presented. And big salute to the AMS team for their excellent performance. Thank you, sir.
Thanks, Varghis. The <coughs> basic thing is that the patient will not complain fake symptoms very, very rarely. All symptoms the patient comes must be very strictly followed. Uh, we cannot just ignore it. That's a basic uh, message that is given by Varghis. Yeah, every, every symptom must be taken properly, investigated properly. Uh, any questions from the floor? Yeah, yeah. Every hour, two percent increase in the hotel. One question from here. It's, it's not a question, uh, just a comment. Uh, not, uh, just a remembrance, actually. Uh, when you presented this case uh, of aortic dissection, uh, you all know, uh, I remember my friend, Dr. Venu Gopal. He's a MA. But you all know Dr. Venu Gopal from Calicut. As, uh, actually, he has died of uh, aortic dissection. Yes, uh, sudden, sudden death was occurred uh, as, uh, as a result of aortic research. It was undetected. And uh, actually, he was, uh, he, he, he was alone in his clinic on that day. Forty percent of the aortic dissection won't reach hospital. Yes. <laughs> he was alone and nobody could, could rescue anyway. It was, that was, uh, I just uh, wanted to say. <laughs> MI was post-COVID. Patient I was post-COVID. Fifteen year old. Actually, she is a son of a, a staff nurse in Chitra. Any, any other comments? Treatment of aortic dissection is a... It's a, a very, very vast The topic. chance of rupture <laughs> is there. Treatment is surgical. Okay. Except for... Uh, Descending thoracic aorta, the treatment, immediate treatment is medical. That is with beta blockers and nitroprusside we can uh, treat. We will uh, we'll watch if it, is, if it is not ruptured. If unruptured, ascending aortic, uh, this thing, the treatment is surgical because the chance of rupture every hour it is 2%. So I have to replace the aorta. Ascending aorta at least first. Then at, as a stage procedure, we may do the arch, we may do the hemi-arch at the same system sometimes. Uh, what is the time interval between the patient can survive? Uh, what is the time interval patient can survive? I, uh, that all, uh, already I have discussed. 10 years survival, if ascending aorta is not, we, we have patients on follow-up right from 2006, uh, living now. 10-year follow-up, actually, uh, the studies all says between 30 and 60 percent patient will be alive. How do you manage the uh, aortic regurgitation? I, aortic regurgitation is because, if it is because of the flap and the valve is normal, sometimes we can resuspend the valve and the, only the ascending aorta is replaced. If, if any coronary involvement, is there a coronary is ruptured? This 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 boy, the coronary was ruptured. Right coronary was ruptured, and it was frank rupture into the pericardium. So here we have to do a bendal. No, which, which the last one ruptured. I should. Ah, so most of the half of the time we have to replace only the ascending aorta. Half of the time maybe valve is replaced. Uh, thank you, Varghese. I think uh, thanks for a wonderful presentation. We'll. Start. Thank you. Session. Thank you, sir. Thank it's been a long day, I understand, and there have been a lot of talks. I hope we all, you all benefited uh, from the efforts that we have put in. It has been a monumental effort from the team, especially from uh, Dr. Pradeep Kadangur. He has been a great leader, and it's been actually an honor to work under him. I also use this opportunity to thank all my team members for putting up such a great effort, and all of you delegates who actually made all this worthwhile. Thank you all. Please join us for tea before we go, go home. Thank you. What is the next episode? <laughs> After we recover, sir. <laughs>